and welcome to another plain truth and this week we're going to be talking about tire punctures <laughs> Joining you today, as always, is the legend that is Captain Al. Hi, Captain Al. A very good evening, Matt. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm oh, good, thank you. Yes, enjoying the sunshine. <laughs> wow, you're lucky you've got some here. We we seem to have rain back here where we are in 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 good old uh, good old Norfolk slash Suffolk. But uh, never mind. What what can we say about that? Uh, listen, I wanted to talk to you about uh, tire punctures. Actually, obviously, because all the car the um, cars, <laughs> all the aircraft and stuff, they they've obviously got uh, like rubber tires and stuff on their landing gear. Now, I've been driving a car uh, a couple of times where I've had a tire blow out. Uh, now, what kind of impact does that have on an aircraft? Obviously, because that, I mean, there's lots of pressures and forces uh, involved uh, in the rubber hitting the tarmac obviously at high speed and i mean for you you're often seeing like puffs of smoke and things aren't you as they as they do touch down on on the runway so i mean in the event of a tire puncture i mean i mean what does what impact does that have uh, when you're landing okay well tire punctures in themselves are relatively uncommon uh the the thickness of the rubber on an aircraft tire is quite thick i I could go and find some technical documents to give you the actual dimensions, but the actual thickness is is quite a lot. Um, and really, that's because there's lots of debris that's around airports, so uh, little bits of metal um, and bits of suitcases, uh, stones, that sort of thing can all affect the integrity of the tyre. Punctures, I've only ever had one in about 25 years. And Again, relatively speaking, as odd people often say, it was only flat at the bottom. Well, yes, that was the case. Uh, in, in our particular case, the puncture per se only became visible as the aircraft was loaded. So you, you'd say that the tyre the still had some pressure in it, um, but obviously the, the, the weight of everybody getting on board the aircraft made it obvious. Now, there is an expression in aviation about kicking the tyres and lighting the fires. Now, if you kick an aircraft wheel, probably the only thing that you're going to reveal is the weakness of your own foot because <laughs> they're pretty solid. And you're not going to know whether you've actually got insufficient pressure in the tyre unless it's really particularly flat. You won't feel that by kicking it either. Uh, the tyres are actually filled with uh, nitrogen as opposed to air because obviously the tyres get very cold uh, when they're in flight. So nitrogen being a lot more stable uh, temperature wise so when we have a puncture uh, the wheel gets changed as you would do on any other vehicle and typically for most aircraft that can be done when it's fully loaded uh, very much akin to how you would change the tire on any other vehicle you come along with a jack pump it up undo the belts or whip it off put a new wheel on and off you go and any decent set of engineers can do a wheel change in about 30 minutes. Not the same as Formula One Grand Prix, <laughs> uh, but uh, there are a few more bolts and uh, the wheels are a bit heavier, uh, especially when you get up to sort of uh, A380 sized aircraft. Uh, one of the aspects that is a consideration if they're doing a wheel change is how long it has been since the aircraft landed because the brakes on that wheel will still be very hot. Typically, the brakes get up to sort of three or 400 degrees Celsius. So you don't really want to be too near those uh, components in that to live cool down a bit. That's quite a hot working area. Um, so, yeah, uh, tyres, uh, very expensive, like most things in aviation, relatively short-lived. Uh, they last about a week in a sort of typical short haul operator. Um, yes, they get a fair amount of use in so much as when an aeroplane touches down, you will see those puffs of smoke because, of course, those wheels go from stationary to rotating uh, very quickly. Typical sort of landing speed is around about 160 miles an hour. So they have to be designed to deal with the impact of landing and then the spin-up of those wheels. And uh, we're quite environmentally conscious, so the majority of airlines will recycle the tyres 
So the tyres will be remoulded and put back into whoa, whoa, service. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hang on, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> the remoulds? Now look, as a car driver, the one thing that we're told is don't waste your time with remoulds. You, you know, you've got to stick with you know new tyres every time you. Is that is that just a marketing ploy, or or are they genuinely different? I, I would say that they're genuinely different, primarily because uh, the remoulding is typically done by the tyre manufacturer. So uh, we're talking about people like uh, Goodyear, for example, a very big tyre manufacturer for aviation, and, and they will uh, perform the, the recycling process, if you like. Um, typically on your car, you don't change the tyres or the wheels on a weekly basis. Uh, no. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's uh, where it comes from. Uh, there's a lot to be looked for in tyres when you're doing your pre-flight inspection as it would be for anything else you're looking for bulges uh, cuts damage in other forms um, you will periodically see uh, the tyre being worn down to the canvas layer uh, what you shouldn't see is the tyre being worn down to uh, the steel that uh, makes up the, the carcass of the tyre and uh, obviously, like any other component on an aeroplane, airlines will like to try to get the maximum amount of wear out of the tyre before it gets replaced. And um, very occasionally, you will see an aircraft with brand new tyres on. Unless, of course, it's come straight from the factory. Generally, new aircraft have new tyres on. Um, but frankly, they don't perform any different to, to the, the remoulds. There have been occasions in the past where aircraft tyres have shred entire layers, and obviously these have been investigated because that's quite a significant failure of the tyre, and that has happened on new and remoles. Uh, so quite a lot goes on for tyres. I, I wish I could give you a price for a tyre, but it will be <laughs> in the tens of thousands of US oh, dollars really? for sure. Gosh. So, I mean, in, in the event of, uh, say, for example, obviously you, you've done your pre-flight check, you've had a walk around, you've taken off, everything's all fine. Uh, if you're uh, in a scenario essentially where um, you're in the air, you're coming in to land, but presumably, uh, I mean, are there pressure warnings and stuff inside the, the, the cabin uh, in the cockpit to tell you essentially that, that, that you've got a puncture perhaps before you're coming in to land? And, and, and what alterations would you make if, if, for example, your nose wheel has got a puncture? Okay, well, that's a really good... Uh, question and the answer to it is it is a option so if you want to pay a bit extra you can have the tyre pressure monitoring system installed on the aircraft and that would have been done at the time of ordering it from Airbus itself so it's an option um, and yes if it's installed you can see the tyre pressures and it will actually show you if a tyre has deflated with regards to making a landing with a deflated tyre, uh, incidentally, the nose wheels aren't monitored. It's only the main wheels. Um, it wouldn't really have any great impact on the operation of the, the landing itself. And you might not even be aware of a, a nose wheel puncture because, of course, uh, large transport aircraft, there are actually two wheels for the nose wheel and there will be at least two wheels per side on the mains so you'd be a little bit more aware of uh, a main wheel puncture even if you didn't have the tire pressure monitoring system uh, the airplane would pull a little bit having landed uh, you can taxi the aircraft with one or two tires deflated uh, the only rules therefore is that you taxi slowly so that you apply less um, exertion on that part of the, the aircraft. Fascinating. Captain Al, thank you. If you'd like to watch more from our great series, then you can do that by pressing here. We've also created you a playlist with all the Plain Truth episodes, and you'll find that just here. Why not like and subscribe to our channel? That way you will be notified whenever we post our great content. Or if you've got a question that you'd like Captain Al to answer, then why not pop it in the comments box below, and you may well feature on an upcoming episode of The Plain Truth.